rain really down in Hillville like Christmas a lot. But the Grinch who lived just north of Hillville did not. The Grinch hated Christmas the whole Christmas season. Now please don't ask why. Don't quite know the reason. It could be that his head wasn't screwed on just right. It could be perhaps that his shoes were too tight. But I think the most likely reason of all may have been that his heart was too tight, he's too small. Whatever the reason, his heart was too stayed there on Christmas Eve, hitting the hoose, staring down from his cake with a sour which he frowned at the warm lighted windows below under town. Well, he knew every who down the hill to me was busy now hanging a mistletoe wreath.
All the, uh, all the windows were dark, but it snowed in the air. All the hoops were all dreaming, so dreams must have care. When he came to the first little house on the square. This is stop number one. The old Grinchy Claus hissed. Then he climbed up the roof. Empty bags in his fist. Then he slid down the chimney. A rather tight pinch. But the Santa could do it. And so could the Grinch. He got stuck only once for a moment or two. Then he stuck out his head of the fireplace flew. Flew where the little who stuck was all hanged in a row. Those stocking secrets were the first things to go. And he slithered and stuck with a smile most unpleasant around the whole room and took every present. Uh, guns, bicycles, roller skates, drums, tractor boards, tricycles, popcorn, plums. And the birds fairy and we stuff them in bags one by one up the chimney. Then he sunk to the ice. He took the huge beast. He took the hoop pudding. He took the roast beast. He cleaned out that ice box as quick as a flash. But the good chimney took this can of hoop hash. Then he stuffed all the food up the chimney with glue. And now when the vents are stuffed with the train. And the birds grabbed the tree and he started to shove when he heard a small sound like the coo of a dove. He turned up back and stopped my home with a little with not more than two. The grinch been caught by this tiny daughter. His daughter, who got out of bed for a cup of cold water. She stared at the grinch and said, But you know that old goods was so smart and so slim. He saw up the line he found it quick. Why, my sweet little talk, the thick Santa Claus lied. There's a light on this tree that won't light on one side. So I'm taking it home to my workshop, my new I'll fix up there, there'll be a dry here. This is fit for the child, and you pat the little head, and you got the little print, and you send it to the bed. And then to the chimney and stuff the tree up. The last thing he took was the log from the fire. He left the chimney himself, the old liar. What, he left nothing on the walls but some hooks and some wire. And the one speck of food that was left in the house was a crumb that was even too small for the mouth. And he did the same thing to the other little house. And then he stuffed the crumb on his mouth.
But the sound wasn't sad, like the sound sounded weary. It couldn't be so, but it was very weary. The Grinch. The Grinch. Popped his eyes, then he shook. What he saw was a shining surprise. Every who knows and who will, the tall and the small, was singing without any presents at all. He had stopped Christmas from coming. It came! Somehow or other, it came just the same. The Grinch was as empty as cold, and the snow stood puzzling and puzzling. How could it be so? It came without ribbons, it came without tacks, it came without packages, boxes, and bags. And he puzzled three hours until his puzzle was sore, and the Grinch thought of something he hadn't before. The new Christmas tree. The new Christmas, he thought, doesn't come from a store. The new Christmas, perhaps, from the old. What happened then? Well, and who will they say that the Grinch's small heart grew three sizes that day? And the minute his heart didn't feel quite so tight, he whizzed with his load through the bright morning light. And he brought back the and the food for the And he
Once on the outskirts of a tiny village, a girl named Sadie lived with her brother Herschel. Her mama lived there too, but to this day she moved away helping Aunt Rose with her new baby. The family was so poor that the only coin in Sadie's purse never had another coin to keep it company. Their, their house was so drafty. The wind whistled through like a train going to Moscow, and they were always hungry. This year was the first night of Hanukkah, and it was the coldest night yet, and the snow was so deep. Sadie's boots sank into the new snow. She walked from tree to tree picking up fallen branches. An hour passed. It got colder and darker, and a bitter wind began to blow. At last, Sadie had enough wood gathered to begin her way home. Suddenly, a <coughs> twig snapped. Sadie whirled around to see a bent old woman standing before her. <laughs> oh, bless you, Tante. You must be so cold. Oh, Tante, you must be Thank you. 
there was a ferocious monster called Neon. This beast lived deep in the ocean. It would sleep every day of the lunar year except on the last day when the cold winter months would turn into spring. Neon would come on land to attack and eat whatever it could find in whatever way in its path. This was the night that everyone lived in terror. Year after year, Neon returned. This was a beast that was far too powerful for anyone to take on or defeat. Many had tried, but all had perished. On this New Year's Eve, all the villagers were busy packing to go deep into the shelters, into deep into the mountains to take shelter from the beast. Amidst all the preparations, only a few noticed that a poor traveler had wandered into the village. Please come, sir. Would you be able to share a bit of food for a passerby? All I ask is for something to eat and a place to lay my head. He knocked on doors but was ignored. Finally, he knocked on the door of a tiny cottage on the edge of town. A very old woman answered the door. Yes? I'm traveling through the village. I need a bit of food and a place to sleep. Can you help me? We are all very busy packing to leave before Neon appears. <clears throat> the old woman began to close the door but paused. She had known hunger herself during lean times in her younger years. Well, perhaps I have some extra jump things on some cheese. Will you come down in the cold? Oh, you are so kind. Thank you. After her meal, the passerby was touched by the old lady's generosity and decided to bestow a long hidden secret of how to be rid of the New Year beast. In return for your kindness, I have a secret to share. Here is how you can scare off the New Year's beast, Neon. <coughs> that evening, when Neon arrived at their village, all the houses were dark except the one in which the old woman lived. As Neon saw the light, it licked its lips in anticipation and approached the house. When the village 
villagers returned, they saw that the old woman, was, the old woman was unharmed. Everyone was eager to learn what she did to survive Neon. The old woman told the villagers that Neon was afraid of loud noises and the color of red. The next year, the villagers stayed up all night, lit fire, lit red lanterns around their house, and pasted red paper on their walls and doors, wore red clothing, and paraded to loud gongs and drums. That year and ever since, Neon has never returned. And this is how Chinese Neon traditions came to be. After Obafana was in bed, 
she noticed there was a brilliant star in the eastern sky. How oh, fun! How am I ever going to get my sleep when the darkness starts the day? She didn't sleep a wink. The next day, when she was out sweeping, Olga Fauna was startled to see three royal-looking men approaching her humble cottage. Is this the way to Bethlehem? How can I say? I've never heard of it! You're looking for a crown king. There are many children! I'm following the star. It kept me awake all night. Now if you excuse me, I have no work to do. This child king is here to help the poor. We bring him gifts. Come with us. After the visitors left, Olga Fauna went back to sleeping. She began to think about what the boy had said. After a while, she put down her broom and started making cakes, cookies, and candies. She put them in a basket, put on her shawl, and started down the road. Maybe I'll take off my broom and sweep the baby's room, for the mother will be tired. Just as she was beginning to leave, she noticed the dirty floor in her house. She swept her little house, she swept her front step, and she even swept the walk all the way down the road. Her feet lifted off the ground and she was running through the sky. Alas, Opafana never caught up with the three wise men and she is still searching. Every year, on the Feast of the Three Kings, Opafana runs across the sky. She visits all the children while they sleep and leaves them gifts from her basket.
Yes, my friends, love is the greatest magic of all.